four, three, two, and one, and we are live with Little Shop of Physics Live, and we have a show for you on oh. Force in Motion. And this particular topic was suggested to us by the uh, Mrs. P Ms. Pites third grade class at Bacon Elementary School. And they asked us some questions about force and motion. And we're going to incorporate those in the program going forward. And we're going to start with just talking about one property of motion. And that's inertia. Or, if you want, it's Newton's first law. So I have this puck here. And if I just set it on a table and give it a shove, it stops. But the reason it's stopping is because of a friction force. If I turn on this air underneath it, and then I put it on a platform, and I give it a, I give it a little bit of a, actually, let's do this on the table. Put it on the table, give it a little bit of a shove, it'll keep on going. And it's going to keep on going until I stop it. So it will remain at rest until I give it a shove, and then it will keep on moving until I stop it. Same thing if I put it here, the table can't exert any force on it, so I can move the table back and forth, and the puck doesn't go anywhere. When it's at rest, it remains at rest. When it's in motion, it remains in motion. And Brenna has a homemade version of this that she's made for us. Yes, I do. So you can explore inertia at home. So how I made this is I just took a CD, an old one, and then I cut the top off of one of these, um, they're like these squishy water bottles. And it has one of these like uh, closing tips um, because we found that's the easiest. So if I blow up a balloon, and then I put it on the tip, and I, I probably should have, Brian even told me this before, blew it up through the tip to make it easier for myself, but I forgot, and so here we are. <laughs> But Why I can put it on anything that's easier for the you. tip. That make any sense to me. Maybe. Well, I'm going to suggest while you're working on that, we have a video that we could share. Yeah, that's fine. While Brenna's working on that, because we made a giant version of the hovercraft that we powered with a leaf blower, and we had people ride that around the atrium in our building. So it's a big piece of plywood with a hole in it, and if we blow air through it, it makes a little cushion of air. And we had Emma sitting on that platform, and she was blowing in air from a leaf blower. And then if we give Emma a little bit of a shove, she will go scooting across the floor and she'll remain in motion until there's a force that acts on her from something that she bumps into, I'm guessing. So just scooting across the floor and then we'll come back into the studio where Brenna has a homemade version of I a Harvard craft. And this is something kids could build. Yep, so if I let the air out of the balloon, I get my homemade hovercraft. Scooting across the table, Woo! friction free. Awesome. There we go. Awesome. And there we go. There we go. Now, Maude has a little thing that we've done before, but it's worth repeating. And this is something that uses the principle of inertia. So, Maude, what do you got? All right. I have got this cool little, I think I want to call it a doodad today. Yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I've just got a three little, uh, three liter bottle and a very thin um, embroidery hoop. And I've got just a little cylindrical block at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to grab the hoop out and see what happens to the Ooh, block. And then the block is hopefully going to stay in place. That is the hope. If you go very quickly and... Oh, oh no. And, so and close. And the hope is that it's so fast that it goes in the bottle. I think we give Maude one more shot on this one. So Maude's going to put the little thing on top. And if she Ooh. yanks that embroidery hoop... The inertia, the force on that block is going to be very, very small. So to a first approximation, it's going to remain at rest. And if it remains at rest, it's just going to drop and go down into the bottle is the hope. It always doesn't work when I have to have it work. But it worked all the time before there we go. that. There we go. <laughs> figuring okay, my luck. Okay, here we go. Let's, let's give it a shot. There we go. It's in the bottle. Well done. Well done. Excellent mod. And then next... Brenna is going to illustrate something. This is a safety thing right here. you got a car. Yes, so this is why you wear seatbelts. So if your car comes to a sudden stop, the car stops, but you don't. Ooh. You keep going. You keep going. So I have a way to demonstrate that if I wind up my little truck here, and then I put Granny in the back, oh, no. and I let it go. 
Granny. Oh, oh Granny she was gets, thrown from the truck. Yep, she, but gets, she wasn't thrown from the truck. It's just the truck stopped and Granny didn't. Yep, Granny keeps going. We'll do that again. Yep, Granny is... That's that's why you seatbelt your that's granny. That's why you seatbelt. You want to stay with the car. <laughs> so when the car slows down, you slow down too. And that's just a question of inertia. But you can have inertia not just for things that are moving, but also for things that are rotating. And Maude's got a great demonstration to show us about this. So here I've just got a bike wheel. And it's just on a little axle here with a rope attached to it. So I'm just going to start this spinning. And once I start it spinning, it keeps spinning. And then even if I go and... Hold it. Oh my gosh. And the spin doesn't want to stop and it also doesn't want to let that thing flip down. So there's an inertia thing going on right there. And it'll only stop if I stop it myself. Awesome. Awesome. And then Bruna has a little device that works this way. I do. So this is basically the same thing that Maude just did, but I have a fidget spinner and it's attached to a pencil. And the spin will stop stabilize this pencil, right? So it has a certain amount of inertia. So if I wind up this fidget spinner, oh my gosh, and that pencil is standing upright and looks like it's drawing a little bit of a picture. It is drawing a picture. It's like a physics art thing. Woo! It's kind of a swirly picture. I'll show it to y'all. <laughs> and then it's a little dramatic when it stops. Let's that. take a look at that picture. Let's oh, see if, man. if Patrick can get the picture. Oh, yeah. We're going to, Brenda's going to put that on her fridge later today. Oh, Look yeah. That. That's kind of <laughs> awesome, actually. Woo! Delightful piece of, of science art right there. And the next thing we're going to take a look at is what is uh, the most mysterious in some ways of Newton's laws is Newton's second law. And it says if you're going to change something's motion, you have to apply a force. And the bigger the mass, the bigger the force has to be. So, Maude, you got a couple of different. Rolling balls there, huh? I do. I have two little golf balls, and one has a pink stripe on it. One has a yellow stripe on it. The yellow striped ball is plastic. Actually, and do we want to tell people, or do we just want to let them figure I it out? I thought we were going to guess with that one. But okay. okay. All right. And then, so I've got two golf balls, and I'm going to line them up and hold them still. Start that. Whoa, Ooh. that one went like crazy, and then the one just went a little bit. <laughs> Moseying along. And what was the difference between those? Well, so this one is plastic and hollow on the inside, and this one is an actual golf ball, and it's a lot, lot heavier, so it has more mass. Awesome. And then you got another thing you're going to show us that shows this principle. So it looked like the one with more mass, you applied the same force to both of them, and the one with more mass didn't change its velocity as much. Yeah. And so here I've got the same concept. I've got like a little springy trampoline here, and I have a ping pong ball and a pool ball. And I think, Brian, did you make a poll for this? Or? I did. And so Maude is going to launch both of these one after the other. And the question is, which is going to go higher, the pool ball or the ping pong ball? What do folks think? Go ahead and weigh in on our poll. we got a clear favorite that's emerging here. What are they saying? A lot saying? of people in favor of the ping pong ball. Ooh. Yeah, it's over 70%. So I'm, I'm going to say let's, let's give it a shot and see what happens. So I'm going to do the pool ball first and see if the ping pong ball are correct afterwards. So I'm just going to pull that down. This is the pool ball. Whoa. <laughs> a little bit a little of a bit. bounce, but not very much bit. going on there. And how about the ping pong ball? Ping pong ball, if I pull it the same amount down. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> and that Whoa. hit the ceiling. <laughs> that went a lot more. So I think folks were correct. It's the ping pong ball that definitely goes Kids are a too lot smart more. for us these days. And we've got a couple of videos that we made that illustrate this principle. And so it turns out a determined person can get a really, really large object moving. So here's Emma pulling the Little Shop of Physics van. And it turns out if she just keeps pulling, she can change its velocity. And it's a big, 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 big mass, but she keeps it going. And she's able to get it going just by continuing to apply a force. Doesn't change it much, but she does get it going. And then she's got to stop it, and you've got to stop it. You have to apply a force as well. She's oh. got to pull the other way to make that thing <laughs> stop. <laughs> and that was kind of an epic thing for, for Emma to do. That was, that was awesome. Now, we also played down in the atrium with a, a bowling ball and a basketball using a leaf blower. 
just like Emma did with the, or uh, just like Ma did with the two golf balls. We have a heavier ball and a lighter ball. And if we watch them go, ooh, the lightweight one ends up going a lot faster, Casey, less mass. Casey, you're losing in this scenario. <laughs> I am. I was set up for failure. <laughs> Brian did that to you. Yeah. I'll, take, I'll take credit for that. And then the next thing we can do with this is basically shoot them back and forth across, across the atrium. And, so, and the thing is, if you use the leaf blower to get them started, you got to use the leaf blower to make them stop. You have to apply the force to get them in motion, and you have to apply a force to get them to stop their motion. And so we did a little back and forthing across the atrium. And that bowling ball, once you get it going, it's a little bit of a trick to make it stop. Whoa. <laughs> it's got a lot of inertia. <laughs> Whoops. That was a little bit of a fail right there. That's okay, though. And, uh, uh, <laughs> it looks yes. like it's hard to direct. It goes in whatever. And the basketball gets going a lot faster, but since its mass is a lot less, you can change its motion much more quickly. Much, much more rapid change in motion. Awesome. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little thing on objects and agents. And this is often other when people talk about Newton's third law. And we're going to start with a tug of war. Yes, we are. Casey and Brenna, and I'm going to step out of the way because I don't want to get damaged here. So we have a contest of strength. <laughs> Let's Got see. A rope. Wins. Hold on to a rope and go. <laughs> and it's a tie. That's totally tie. even. That's totally even. <laughs> now, I'm, we're going to do something a little bit different. If you look at Casey is doing, Casey's got some grocery bags, and she's going to put grocery bags on her feet. Now, when let's think about what's pulling on Casey. You can you can't push yourself. So what's pulling on Casey is all the things which are attached to Casey, and one is the floor, and the other is the rope. Those are, and so basically, it's not a tug of war between Brenna and Casey. This is a tug of war between the floor and the rope. And if Brenna pulls on the rope, the rope pulls on Casey, but the floor can't pull anymore. <laughs> and so as a consequence, oh yeah, Casey is surfing her way across the shop. And let's do that one more time. We got Alrighty. time to do that again. Absolutely. Even oh, though yeah. you're taller, yeah. I'm going to win. It's a, it's a tug of war between the rope and the floor, and the, ro the floor just can't make as much of a force because of the slipperiness. And so Casey gets pulled across the floor. So if you're doing a tug of war, and, and this is kind of amazing. Um, you need to have the right shoes. And if you lose, you can just blame it on your footwear is what I'm saying. Because it really, it's, it's the things that are pulling on Casey is the rope and the floor. Now, another thing we're going to look at, and this was something that some, one of the people in Ms. Pite's class asked was, when you hit a baseball, it sometimes bounces out in the field. But if I try to dribble a baseball, why won't it bounce? And I want to, we want to think about dribbling. And when something bounces, when it hits the ground, it comes back up again. The thing that's actually pushing on it is the ground. But the qualities of the ground make a difference. Casey, what do you got for us? Here, Brian, I've just got a regular old basketball. You can see if I bounce it on the table. Bouncy, bouncy. Gives a pretty good bounce back. <laughs> and if I take it over to the pillow, oh, oh. nothing. I can't even start it. Whereas on this one, oh, it's usually. You can get it. Oh, yeah, here it goes. There. We believe in you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So we're going to good dribble and not so much on this Nothing. particular pillow, not so much on the pillow. And the pillow just doesn't, when you push on the pillow, the pillow pushes back on you, but it doesn't push as hard. You can't get as much of a pushback and not enough pushback for that, for that bounce. Right. This is the same thing Ooh. as if you I have a jump. I think we're going to come back to that. Oh, we I think are? we're coming back to that because it's first <laughs> over to Brenna. You're just good. so excited. <laughs> and here's the thing. When you jump in the air, Brenna's going to jump in the air. That I there's am. There's something, like when Brenna doesn't push herself up in the air because you can't push yourself. If Brenna's going to jump, what's actually pushing her up is the floor. And Brenna's going to demonstrate this. I am. So here I have some cups and I have nine cups. And I don't know, this probably helps Patrick more. But I'm going to put these nine cups in a square. And these are just paper cups, little Dixie cups, I think. And then I'm going to put a board on top of these cups. Now, when I'm just standing on the board with the cups, I'm pushing down on the board. The board is pushing back on me. But when I try and jump, oh, 
Oh, I come back down and it smashes all the cups. And let's, I'll tell you what, Brenna, let's take those nine cups. Let's, let's do that again. We got time to do this. All right. Again. All right. Let me okay. try again. It's pretty fun. So, so nine cups. Should I do nine or should I do fewer? You know what? Why don't you do six? I bet six gonna, cups will hold you. All right. So I'm going to do six. Let's and this see. is good. You can see, like, we are still working this stuff out. Yes, we are. To figure out how to make it go. Brian did it with nine cups, but he's a little bit bigger than me. And so I'm going to try it with six cups now. And if I stand on the board. Get supported. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved my weight a little bit and they died. Okay, so let's do six cups again. We're going to get this. We're we going to get this. We are. We have time. We got time. So six cups. And then uh -huh. Brenda's going to. And should we try. Let's try eight cups. All right. Or should I try seven? One in the middle. What do you think, Brian? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go I'm gonna go eight. All right. So Brenda's going to put eight cups down, and she's going to stand on it. So think what's happening. The, cup, the floor is pushing on the cups, and the cups are pushing on the board, and the board is pushing on Brenna. So when Brenna stands on the board, she's pushing on the board, and the board is pushing on her. She's standing still. Now, before you jump, what we're going to do is when Brenna jumps, she's going to jump really aggressively. She pushes down on the ground. The ground pushes back on her. Oh. <laughs> and you, yeah, you crunched them good. I did. You crunched them I good. I did. And so the floor, because the floor was being was pushing on the cups, which are pushing on the board. Brenna pushes on the board. And so the cups are pushing back, and they can't provide that much force. So not enough force to get Brenna off the ground. And you did not go very high at all. <laughs> no, I didn't. And then we've got a demonstration that Casey's going to do. Yeah, so if you ever try jumping on your mattress at home, you notice it's a lot harder than jumping on the ground, especially even more than a trampoline would be. It's because it's not pushing um, back on you as hard. So if you can see, when I jump on the ground, I can get some space between my toes and the floor, but on the pillow... Oh, even if I try hard, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> that's a memory foam mattress. And with a springy mattress, sometimes you can get some altitude. We used to do that when I was a kid. Mm. I shouldn't say that. But with a memory <laughs> foam mattress, when you push down on it, it just kind of sinks in. And its whole thing is not to push back. Right. And so you, it, that squishiness of the foam doesn't give you that push back that you need in order to get yourself into the air. That is awesome. Now we're going to do another thing with pushing, and we have a little video, and Emma and Casey went outside and they were on some chairs, and when they pushed each other apart, they both go backwards. You can see they're both pushing with their feet, and they go backwards. But then, we tried something a little different. Now they're both clearly pushing, you can see their legs are working. But now, Casey's just pushing, or Emma's just pushing on Casey's chair, Emma still moves backwards. And what was pushing Emma backwards was Casey. Casey, or Emma was pushing on Casey, and so Casey's pushing back, even though she's not doing anything. That's your Newton's third law, your equal and opposite reaction thing going on there. And speaking of that, we had a lot of questions about Newton's third law. And if you can push on something, it pushes on you. Brenna, what's, what do you got here? Well, here I have a car, and it's, it's a rocket car as we call it and I'm going to do it on the floor because it gets it goes pretty far and it gets a little messy so I'm going to come down here Patrick's going to come down here too and I'm going to move the chair there we are so if I try this car with just air inside I can increase the pressure in the bottle and eventually no, no, let's go right for the water right for the water for the wa let's go okay. for the water so I'm saying alrighty so if I put water in this bottle, the cork has something to push against. And so this car goes pretty far. So here's some water in this bottle. And then you're going to pump air into it? I am. So if I tilt it on its side, I don't think I got enough water in there yet, Brian. I, yeah, I think you have to go over the level of the cork. So then the air is going to push the water out of the bottle. So if the bottle is pushing on the water... I think that water is going to pop on the bottle, and oh, and there we go. <laughs> oh, man, that was 
Refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshing. That's what we're looking for here. And so the bottle pushes on the water and the water pushes on the bottle. That's the principle of a rocket. And Casey has a way of making a rocket as well. And she's got two different rockets, right? I do, yeah. So the first one I have here is just, you just get a regular old plastic bottle. I've put a handful of Alka-Seltzer tablets in this. Um, and I tied it to some ropes because the first time I did this, I shot it into the ceiling. Yeah, we can see it. Made a little bit of a wet mark. That's so okay. That's okay. Be careful with this. It can make a mess. Um, I'm just going to throw a splash of water in this and then cork it up really quick. And we'll see. All right. So water goes in there. The Alka-Seltzer is liberating gas. Pressure inside the bottle is increasing. She turns it upside down. <laughs> Let's and then see. the bottle pushes down on the water, and the water pushes. Maybe. Ooh, it's thinking about it. <laughs> it's it takes ready. a second. Oh. <laughs> the water pushes up on the bottle. Another rocket. Another rocket. But wait a minute. You've got a second rocket. I do. So, back to that second law. Oh, no. What did you do to Cam? <laughs> Cam <laughs> like... Cam's willing to do anything for science. <laughs> <laughs> I've just made the bottle about... Mm, two and a half times heavier, I think we said. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so you can see, if I add the same splash of water, it has the same number of Alka-Seltzer tablets in it. Um, let's see here. So we're going to get the same force, but we just have more mass. Put them in the same thing. Also, he's padded, so the ceiling <laughs> is safe. Here, here we go. Goes. Let's see what happens to Cam. Come on, Cam, you can do this. You got this. <laughs> Come You're on, stalwart, buddy. buddy. Come on, Cam. You got this. He's thinking very, about it. I see him <laughs> staring at me. <laughs> I'm scared to get He's close. got giant retroreflective eyes, which is kind of awesome. I may not have put an... Oh! <laughs> 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 that didn't happen last time. That was awesome. That was kind of awesome. That well, was kind of awesome. it should have gone shorter. <laughs> <laughs> we learned a little something about rocketry today. Wow. That was kind of an awesome thing. And now we have another wet mark on the ceiling. <laughs> this is kind of awesome. And now I'm going to show a demonstration real quick, and then we're going to do a video. So I've changed the order ever so slightly, and I apologize for folks about that. But I have a, we have a super intense leaf blower, and you saw us using those to plow, push around bowling balls, etc. And we've got a leaf blower here on a skateboard. And the leaf blower takes air and it pushes it this way. So it's pushing very hard on the air. And as a consequence, the air is pushing backward on it. And so if I use a leaf blower and I turn it on, it works like a rocket. Whoa! <laughs> Cooling me off over here. And this thing is pushing with some force. Because it's pushing the air, and so the air is pushing back on it. And as a matter of fact, you can actually propel yourself on a skateboard with a couple of leaf blowers. And we did that down in the atrium. We had Audrey join us, and Audrey has brought her skateboard in, and we said, you're not going to push yourself. You're going to use a leaf blower to propel yourself. <laughs> So full power, and now she's pushing herself forward, and now she's yes. going to change direction. There she slows down, stops, and reverses course. Slows down, stops, and reverses course. This is like your jet-propelled skateboard. Awesome, awesome thing. Now, we got a lot of questions from kids about flight, and Brenda's got a little helicopter thing going on here. How does the helicopter work? So this helicopter, I can just turn it on. And it has a sensor that wants to stay at a certain distance. Let's see, work, helicopter. It's remote. It doesn't quite like to work with its remote. Let's try it again. And how is it holding itself up? Well, Brian, if we hold it above this, wow. you can see it's blowing air down and that's because it's pushing down on the air but the air also has to be pushing up on it. Awesome you can see that it's really pushing down hard on the air it's making quite the breeze. I can feel it over here. What was that Brian? I said I can actually I can actually feel it over here. <laughs> yeah I couldn't hear you. <laughs> sorry 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 and I think you should get it going and see if you can make that thing kind of like move up and down along with Alrighty. like the furry board that would be an awesome thing. Sometimes it's propellers decide to just I think they're stuck on the one side. 
There, there we, go. we go. Come on. Oh, there we go. There we go. Or we could just end up sending it toward Patrick, and that's cool, too. Yeah, watch your, watch your noggin, Patrick. <laughs> Pushing air down, which pushes the helicopter up. Awesome, awesome. And then Casey did a little thing with a wing, and the way wings work is that they push air down, and that pushes the wing up. And we had a little wing that Casey ran down in the atrium. And it was a really, really lightweight piece of styrofoam that we cut into a wing shape and weighted it. And so we have a video of her kind of like pushing this around in the atrium. So she lets it go. And then it's going to start to fall, but she's pushing up air toward the wing. So Casey's pushing up on the air, which pushes up on the wing and makes that thing go. And it can fly forever. We were really giving Casey a workout for this show. <laughs> she was running behind this airplane, trying to keep pushing up air into it, and then the air pushes up on the airplane, keeps the lift going, and keeps that thing going. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. And then we had a question from kids about airplanes and about birds, and, th and they said, we know jets and planes use the third law of motion, but what about birds? Are they pushing air backward to go forward? And the answer is... Yes. 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 A perceptive question indeed. And we've got a video of a little bird toy, I think, flying around in the atrium. And this is the Tim bird, I think. I like it's, the title of this, Patrick. The, yeah, this is kind of awesome. <laughs> Crank Very that retro. thing up. And then you're putting energy in it and then let it go and it flies and it really Yay. propels itself. It really propels itself forward for sure. Oh, no. <laughs> and if it's pushing itself forward, it better be pushing air backward. And Casey, you can demonstrate this. I can. I have here the same little Tim bird. Um, how it works is there's a little rubber band on the inside, and you're just twisting it up. And let me see. Give this a few cranks. Okay. And then you can see if I put this pom-pom back behind him. Oh yeah, oh. you can see when he flaps the wings, it's definitely making the pom-pom go. Can we see that one more time? We can. Let me give him a few more awesome. cranks. Yeah, give him some cranks. Tim Bird wants Scared to fly. Scared to snap him. Okay. Why is his name Tim Bird? It just is Tim Bird. <laughs> <laughs> just it. Oh yeah, Ooh. look at it. Look at it blowing those pom-poms around. That is awesome. So yes, birds fly by pushing air backwards. Now we can get lift if you have a structure which is curved just right. And Brenna's got a little lift thing she's going to demonstrate with a balloon and a hair dryer. That I do. So here is my balloon friend. I don't know what their name is, but you guys can decide. And if I turn on this hair dryer, and I let's do it this way. All right. And it looks like it's being held up. The air is curving over top of the balloon that's pulling the air down. And so that's clearly pulling the balloon up. Kind of like the thing Casey was doing. You're keeping the air moving, so you're keeping the lift going. And if I shut the hair dryer awesome. off, the awesome. balloon awesome. lands. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, that was fantastic. And then we, we can do it, of course, bigger. We've got like a giant beach ball right here. And if I blow over top of the beach ball, the air curves down. So if the air gets pulled down, the ball gets pulled up. Adjusting our ceiling, which is awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we can make that thing, we can make that thing fly. And we're doing that using lift. Now I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one more thing. We've got one minute left. The people who are here, these are like the hardcore. This is you're 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 our peeps right here. So I want you folks to type in a question that you have or an idea you have for a show. And let's take one minute for go ahead and put that in the chat. Tell us what you want to see, because you're the people. We got Tegan, we got Grayson, we got Evan, all the folks who see us, animals. We animals. can, oh, we can animals. make that happen. We can make that happen. <laughs> we can what try. else do we got? Give us a question or an idea for a topic in our 30 more seconds. Uh -huh. Awesome. What are people saying, Brian? I'm seeing animals, seeing electricity. Why choose? We could do both. <laughs> animals and <laughs> electricity. Animals and electricity. <laughs>
in the same How show. How do we move? Ooh, Sloan G. Good on you, my friend. We could do a show on locomotion. Ooh, robots. Ooh. Robots is a nice idea. Awesome. And cars? Cars could go on a locomotion show. Cars could go on a locomotion show. How do we move and how do our cars with that? And then animals again. And animals. We can try again. We can do that again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> and robots. Man, Tegan is like all about the robots because that's about 35 uh, exclamation points right there. <laughs> hey, robots are cool. <laughs> and robots are cool. And boats, too, which is fantastic. So we have some wonderful ideas for upcoming episodes. I want to thank you for joining us for this episode. Next week is Poudre School District Spring Break. And so we're going to take a break next week. We don't get a spring break, but you folks do. So you folks enjoy your break. In two weeks, we'll be back with another show. Topic to be determined because we've got some really good ideas. You folks have a good break. We'll see you in a couple.